and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some War Mother Lux. So I know we played War Mother Lux about six days ago, but this is a new War Mother Lux deck donated by a different viewer. Um, and that's kind of weird, right? Like, I never heard of War Mother Lux before, and now we got another version. So if you liked the other version, hopefully you'll like this one as well. Last time we played a little bit more top-end stuff, right? Like we had Tiana and Brightsteel Formation and things like that. This one we're a little lower to the ground, um, trying to be, uh, trying to kind of curve out with Averroes and Sentry, um, Kindly Tavern Keeper, some stuff like that to help us out in the early game. And instead of Braum, you know, we used Braum last time. Now we got Anivia because Anivia is great with War Mother's Call. So we got Anivia and Lux. We got Radiant Guardian. Um, but yeah, we're, we're mostly going to want it to be hitting our champions with War Mother's Call. And then, of course, also for the six mana for Lux, we have Remembrance and Harsh Winds. Both of those cards are awesome. Um, and then, yeah, that's kind of our deck. Fury of the North, single combat. Some good quality cards. I'm a little skeptical on two purifies. I'm not sure if this is a great purify metagame, to be honest. So pretty skeptical about this one. Um, but we're going to give it a try just like this. I could see purify supposed to be um, Brittle Steel, Elixir of Iron, like these these kind of cards. Instead, another Harsh Winds, I wouldn't mind either. Another Catalyst of Aeons could probably be good as well. But I'm going to play it as is. Um, to, you know here and then those will be maybe some things to change if uh, purify is not holding up its end of the bargain but let's go play five games over in ranked see how it does and that's going to be uh, our deck for this video uh what there's a potato what are you talking about there's some kind of bug with, what, with Teemo or Ledros or something? I don't know. I don't know what bug you're referencing. Oh, it's a sign-in error, so you can't sign in and play. Oh, that's not cool. Yeah, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're going to get that fixed real soon. Yeah, I definitely want to get the sign-in error fixed. Okay, we have Timo Sejuani. We're going to keep all of these cards? Question mark? Maybe get rid of Fury of the... I don't know, Fury of the North is pretty cool. I'll just keep them all. Yeah, that's too bad. So yeah, whenever it loads, it just says loading game and then times out in the match. That is very annoying. So those of y'all watching on YouTube that aren't here in uh, in chat, if you if you heard about us talking about getting an, a new mic cord for the microphone, that I was hoping that that would be the fix to like the not all the time but sometimes uh, sound problems. I think it like the times it does happen is probably a bad mic connection. That would be my guess. But anyway, the uh, Google d did not tell me the correct cord to go by, and so the, the cord just came in a little bit ago while we were playing the previous deck, and it's the wrong cord, so I uh, got the correct one now, and that's going to be shipped in tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be in for tomorrow's stream or not, but that is the plan now. Um... Yeah, we're going to play Mage Seeker Persuader. I was considering just going straight to attacks with Lancer on Peddler and then healing Lancer with Tavern Keeper. We'll go this route. Um, boo. I would have gone straight to combat. I would have had my Fury of the North to counteract their Fury of the North. Would have been beneficial. Nothing like the great outdoors. This 
so take the chill off. Armed and ready. Hope this works. Eleven, so far. Seems like we have more already. Stand in judgment. You have no alibi. You can't outrun justice. I think it's better to kill the peddler because I'm going to be casting the harsh winds the next turn anyway. So I can harsh winds the Teemo. I think the peddler is more important to get off the battlefield so like the spells they play don't uh, give me a bunch of puff caps. And I didn't want to play the Lux pre-combat because if I play Lux then they could play Sejuani and Frostbite my, um, my challenger. But here we get to like they play Sejuani, I harsh winds the Sejuani and the Teemo. And then I get the final spark, and I'll have final spark kill Teemo. So that's the plan. <laughs> You're a big fan of Purified Potato? Yeah, that would have been... Would have worked a little bit better earlier. If they have, like, worst case scenario is they just have, like, a random Mushroom Cloud in hand, which could be just another Teemo for the Champion spell, because then that would level up Teemo, and then Teemo would still strike me and double up the Puff Caps. I would have expected them to do that first, though. All right, so that worked. Um, I guess I just play Remembrance and get another Final Spark. I don't think I play Catalyst of Aeons. A beacon through the dark. Oh, maybe I do. I mean, Catalyst of Aeons costs me two mana for next turn. So probably not. Just pass. Because it costs me two mana for next turn, and then it doesn't give me any additional mana for any other turn after that. That was unlucky. You dropped three puff caps? 27 cards? Not great. Mm. I could have Fury and kill my Lux. Fury of the North, that is. If you're the north, they just probably played on the Sejuani. Well, if this would not, this would have been a pretty decent turn to War Mother's Call if we could have. Many 
tribes under one banner. Oh, if mushrooms could talk. didn't play the hearth guard i could have catalyst of aeons after that and gained three life and also create a final spark mages can't hide from me put on me mask secure me tail start to die Have to kill Peddler. Oh, that's a harvest right there. Ouch. GG's. We fight for one frail yard. So it's super unlikely that we win this because of all the puff caps and yeah, they have that. It's a poor puff cap luck. There are a lot of those. Uh, but yeah, playing the hearth card really cost me. For sure. Um Yeah, they just had they leveled up that Sejuani so fast. We had we really did have some poor puff puff cap luck early on. Drawing those puff caps, let that Sejuani level up, and then they got to frostbite our our stuff so Sejuani doesn't die, and you know it's just kind of rough. But game could have been a lot different if I if I didn't play Mage Seeker Persuader on turn four, if I just went straight to challenge, and then they play Fury of the North, and I respond with Fury of the North. Uh, could have been a lot different if I would have done that. Yeah, that was... That was the turn. Kind of forgot that they just played Fury of the North, and... Didn't didn't play around it very well. So yeah, it still says that we're 18. We were 18 beforehand. So it seems like that was just a like that happens sometimes as a misconnection. You know, it's not like a a opponent conceded that fast. It's just like a, a misconnection, and I guess it gives you a win, which is kind of cool. But yeah, we didn't actually get any LP. Like it wasn't actually a game. Hmm. I'm not sure I keep any of them. I could see just keeping Lux because of how good Lux is. Not sure. Sheltering Hand gives me gifted sub. Thank you so much there, Santa Kitty Dexterity. Hey, Embryo. Our first of the day.
So we'll have Remembrance this turn. We want 5-5 five, five tough. It's like Vanguard something. All right, we'll take Swiftwing Lancer. It's not a bad one. I mean, blocking here, it turns on a Brittle Steel. If I don't block, it helps out there, said Dwani. Hey, Mr. Sir, welcome back. I don't think I'm going to be challenging anything with this Lancer because of Brittle Steel. I want to have like some protection with like Purify or Single Combat or, or something. I don't want to just lose a 5-3 Challenger to a 1-mana burst spell. Investigating. Oh, I was really hoping they would Brittle Steel and then I'd Purify in response, then it would go back to being a 5-4, right? For sure, go back to being a 5-4. Many tribes under one banner. All right, dueling hearth guards. One mana six six. We fight for one frail yard. I will unite the frail yard. So good. What makes their deck so good. Okay, we go back to a five three. Carved from the savage cold. <laughs> So insanely good. Oh man, this frostbite deck. All right. Uh, well, I have approaching the battlefront. Very little I can do. Stand together. Bristle attack. Good. That's exactly what I want. No. Yes. No. Darn. Stand strong. This is me taking eleven. Because of the Overwhelm. I wanted them to put the Hearth Guard not in front of an Overwhelm. Not in front of the Sejuani. Trifarian. And they just draw four cards. I don't even know how you like nerf this deck that we're playing against. I don't, I don't really know what like what should be the target. It's just everything is just too good <laughs> about the deck. Sharpen the blade, secure the kill. Just all these things, just everything. Day. 
Okay, Kordak. Changing the Guardian to the new Shark. Assessor being a 3-3 or a 3-4 doesn't, doesn't change anything. Like, it would change absolutely nothing with this game. That would change. Not, yeah, not a single thing. Show me a target for glory. Like literally Face nothing. Me. Watch, learn, born for conquest. Stand and defend. We gotta hope they don't have another Sejuani in hand that gives them the Fury of the North. It's kind of crazy my win rate against every every deck and my win rate versus that deck different they are i probably have like a 20 percent win rate against frostbite midrange over the last month with with just everything you know just everything together uh where's the shark all right here we go the bloom tooth we are number one I don't know if it's just change all the, the spells to make them all cost more. Like, I don't know if, like, Elixir of Iron, Brittle Steel, you just make all those two mana. You know, Harsh Winds is that seven mana spell, not six. I don't know if that's the answer. I don't know if, like, Avros and Trapper needs to go go back to being a 2-3, like it was before, instead of a 3-3. Three, three. There's there's no downside to Avros and Trapper, you know, being a three mana three three. It's a really good body. And then Do I keep Hearth Guard, I guess. Let's see. I guess this matchup, Hearth Guard may be better than Radiant Guardian. Let's keep them both. Yeah, Sejuani really is overpowered especially like it, Sejuani's honestly too big especially with all the other buffs and stuff that Freljord already does Sejuani really is too large uh, for also giving frostbite and giving vulnerable so like being a you know being a like frost like you know basically Sejuani is six mana vengeance that also gives you a huge you know a huge body left over that has overwhelm that also when leveled up completely dominates the board as well so that's been a card that ever you know ever since the beginning i've always said that sejuani d does way too much it's just frel yord wasn't played that much and so people didn't really notice it as much but now really notice like um Escapes my watch. I don't think Fury of the North should be. If you change anything about Fury of the North, it's probably just add a mana. Like it, 
could be a five mana spell. It's kind of the thing about like a lot of those. Like I don't think you, I don't think, I think Frostbite being burst makes a lot of sense where you can, after that happens, then you can reuse like pump spells and stuff instead of it being fast speed where you just can't use a pump spell because then the, the fast speed will make a Frostbite afterwards. Um, Yeah, I don't know if, if Sejuani needs Overwhelm and Vulnerable and Frostbite. Like, does Sejuani need all of all of those things? Like, does it have too much? much? I don't know. I don't, I don't really know the answer to that. The War Mother will unite us all. Set the hooks! Certainly hard to balance. I think that maybe, yeah, Sejuani is definitely hard to balance. Maybe somewhere where you start is just simply having a Sejuani be a um, be a five five, kind of like Hecarim. You know, and there's lots of five fives running around. Maybe, maybe that's where you can kind of start is instead of a five six. Because especially with all the buffs that Freljord has, especially like Avros and Hearthguard, Omen Hawk, that kind of stuff. Tejuani like... starts at a 5-6, but most of the time is a 6-7. You know, a lot of times you have like a 7-8, like all, all sorts of other larger numbers. Definitely want to draw War Mother's Call. That would be our number one card to draw. Avarosans, stand together! Maokai's just like already leveled up. 20 out of 25. They're about to be deep. <laughs> I've dealt zero damage to him. save single combat even though it wouldn't be bad to use this while it's a 4-4 because it's about to be a 7-7 but killing like maokai other stuff like that pretty important definitely want to find war mother's call past turn What does that mean? Who approaches? Hmm. 
I'm just not sure how we beat uh, Nautilus, right? Like, what do we do against Nautilus? Heck, even Maokai. Like, I, I'm not sure how we actually can win this game. Honestly, not sure what we can do to win this game. Yeah, we could detain one Nautilus, but there's there's three of them, and they're they're coming up here very quickly. Stand in judgment. You can't outrun justice. Hey, you there! Do I keep playing around Ruination? Can we even beat Ruination? Not really. They have to have their talent, their champions by now. Nothing escapes my watch. Hey, Nenuel. so slow. Do they want... How badly do they want this ruination? Do they honestly just do not have a Nautilus? What is going on? Skeleton, thanks for stopping by. Glad you've been enjoying the YouTube videos and everything. Thanks for stopping by live. Feel free to ask 
Any questions? Way too long on that ruination. Should have fired that thing off a while ago. I don't think we get the scout attack in. <laughs> Pretty sure we're just gonna be normal attacking. Alright, GG. I am very surprised we won that game. My opponent just didn't do anything for, you know, five, six, seven turns, something like that. They just didn't do a single thing. And so there we go. We got it. All right, and uh, maybe it's the the luck of the bloom tooth. It was from Kordak. Having us switch over to the Festival Bloomtooth. Maybe that was the luck of the Bloomtooth. Could have been, could have been. Okay, another slower deck. We are an Anivia deck. I'm not sure if y'all know that or not, because we haven't seen a single Anivia. <laughs> Had to say something. There's Anivia. Let's get rid of... All these? And we draw... Okay, we'll take Catalyst Veons. Nothing escapes my watch. Well, this isn't bad. Um... Can see the Demacian border. Off for the trade. Instead of just sitting here taking a bunch of damage. Look out for Reavers. Just trade. Light the signal fires. Could be useful later. Alright, so if I play Catalyst. Oh, they didn't do anything. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play Catalyst. Oh. Next turn we have eight mana. Six and two. This'll take the chill off. And let's take this outside. Be interesting to see what they do. They can't play Anivia on their own. Like, they can't play their own Anivia. Braum is the card that I want to see the least. Cool. We'll have them waste all that mana. That, that sounds good. We develop, they don't. This one's on the house. So horrible harsh winds, but I kind of want to just play harsh wind so that all of these mage seekers are enabled. Even though it's a horrible harsh winds. I protect this place. I don't know. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm scared of Fury of the North. I don't want a Harsh Winds and block, then they Fury of the North. I don't really want that to happen. I'm scared of that. I wouldn't be able to Harsh Winds and Fury both. Hmm. Pretty soon my Nevio is going to be leveled up. I'll be good. The more turns we go like this, the closer it is to leveling up. Cool. I wasted a Withering Well. Good to know. So now I will be wasting a card as well. I don't really want to waste a card. Yeah, it's not so bad. Me wasting a card, that is. been a super strange game. We just have too many really good cards that I don't want to waste. Talk about how we have ten cards in hand, so if I pass, then see. Very good card. Snow, wind, and ice. I do wish I had more space for the Thames. with a great horn companion. I'll have 
great horn companion and an India both die. That's just a great withering whale for them. Yes, the egg still counts as a champion. A new era begins. Does Purify heal? Like, if I Purify my own thing, does it turn into a 3-2 again? Does it heal? Okay, y'all are saying no, it'd be a 3-1. I definitely need Lux, War Mother's Call, Aperos, and Hard Card. Like, those are cards that I need. I don't... With with the current cards that we have, we don't beat Rekindler, Anivia, Harrowing, you know, like, Harrowing, Rekindler, that kind of stuff. We don't have the power to beat those kind of, that like, those kind of cards with the cards that we currently have. Justice will be served! We each died, then found hope. Worst case scenario. Purify just does nothing. I don't know, I don't I don't have any wonderful ideas. Maybe I detain 
start detaining Anivia. This is our time. Purify my other thing that's detaining. Will you comply? Or are you complicit? Hate playing another Radiant Guardian and then they play Ruination. Right? Like, that would be a mess. Kindler's good. I think Lux and War Mother's Call were our two super important cards to have. And yeah, didn't have either of those. I think those are the two most important ones. Especially War Mother's Call. Gosh, I was thinking they didn't have anything that was going to do three damage. Alright. Yeah, with the four mana, they had the box. And I, you know, it was obviously a lot safer to go put it on the Radiant Guardian, but I didn't really want to purify, you know, I would have to pure, I was going to have to purify whatever I, I targeted, and I didn't really want to purify my Radiant Guardian. If I, I think my big mistake was killing their Anivia with my with my five five, right? Like that was my big mistake. Like maybe if I just never kill their Anivia, I don't know, they'd just have like a bunch of Brahms. Like I don't know, maybe that could have been different. Like that was the big mistake is killing was killing the Anivia. I'm playing against a bunch of Draven Lee Sin today. Yeah, I guess I should have played around the box. See, I would have loved to have this hand the last time. With Remembrance on three, Hearth Guard, Hearth Guard. I would have loved to have this against the previous opponents. One two shadow assassin looking a little weak right now. Night falls. Nothing escapes my watch. I have the best job. Just a little weak. Justice. Could definitely see them having retreat return. I think it's the likely card being played here. What 
Let us gain when we return malevolence. I will play my part. So that means they only gain one life because they only do one damage with that lifesteal unit. Our strength is yours. The spirit gives to those who listen. Well, they don't have the room for two draglings. You know, if they play two spells. Sentry just doesn't do anything, does it? You can't outrun justice. I got an axe with your name on it. The dragon binds us. It's too late for you. What do they got? Stun. Retreat. have those fights. We'll go Fury here. Just get Draven out of here. Two more spells. I guess that all works. Hey, Jerm with the donation deck. Let's check this one out. All right, what do we got? The notification message doesn't work too well with the codes and stuff. Turn V, all right. A Sejuani control deck. Okay, you level up Sejuani ASAP and use instant speed damage for incoming attacks and stack your attacks to get triggers to freeze on your turn. Twisted Fate is fate, but a flip doesn't hurt. Have fun. All right, so Twisted Sejuani. Axes coming right that up. looks pretty sweet. Um. Jeremy V, if you're here in chat, do you have a preference on what time or like what day, what time slot, that kind of stuff? Like, do you want me to play it tomorrow? And if so, do you have a preference on first, second, third, or fourth? Tomorrow streams the same time as tonight's stream. So I'll go with Harsh Winds over Fury of the North so that they don't get to um, so that they don't get to uh, create any spinning axes. Okay, about 4.30-ish uh, Eastern time, I guess, or Eastern time, that'll be, that'll, that'll be our first deck. That's usually when we kick off the first deck, is around 4.30 Eastern, so that'll work out. 
That'll work out well. Safeguard our homes. You have no alibi. Hey Jupper Up, I'm doing well. How are you doing? You act, but do not okay, see. perfect. You yep. Alright, so I'll play yours tomorrow first. Played three hearth guards now. Yeah, that five seven about to level up to a six eight also. Playing Anivia, I don't get to have both Harsh Winds and Fury of the North available. We can do one or the other. It looks like Harsh Winds will be what we're doing. Is really good. Small bird. Here in your time of just a three five. Us. I'm surprised they didn't just use a spinning axe to kill my 5 1. I don't know if they were just giving up. It seemed like casting a spinning axe to kill that 5 1 would have been worthwhile. Thing to do. Your senses. Nothing to worry about if you have nothing to hide. War Mother's Call. No, why did I play the 6 6? I don't have the mana for War Mother's Call now. No. Right, two and three. Until our paths cross once more. It's okay, thanks, Doctor. Yeah, I shouldn't have played that three mana six six. Ooh, we got new sleeves. Or card back. I guess they're called. Got a new card back. The Spirit of Obsession. Okay, so there we go. There was Warm Other Lux. Another fun one to play. We unfortunately didn't have Lux too much. We got to like do some Final Spark in uh, one of those earlier games. Um, but, you know, we didn't get to do a whole bunch of really cool final Lux Final Spark stuff. Um, this one played pretty well though. Yeah, the, the pure, I mean, I guess like the purifies are, you know, like they're, they're the combo with detain. Um, but I'm still not sure that they are more useful than what brittle steel would be. Um, I think I'd probably go brittle steel over elixir of iron, but that, that's kind of like your, 
your uh, options there. I do I do wonder that this is like too much slanted towards aggro and like towards like burn aggro and stuff, which there's not that much aggro these days. And so I wonder if you really need three kindly tavern keepers to go along with three radiant guardians. Like maybe that's just too much lifesteal. I could see that being the case of of too much lifesteal in the deck. Um you know, maybe maybe you know, maybe it should just be higher impact cards, especially like the tavern keeper. Hey Aquilabot. Um uh, But yeah, love Tarsh wins. Remembrance is great. War Mother's Call is really cool. Um Anivia Lux, both very strong champions. Hearthguard, of course, is awesome. Um, I do that that is a very very good thing about Tavern Keeper. Maybe it's just too many Radiant Guardians, to be honest. But yeah, that is a great thing about ta Tavern Keeper is that you remember it's on turn three and you make a large Demacia thing and it usually gets blocked and then you know it usually gets hurt and then your Tavern Keeper can heal it. Um that's usually a yeah, that's that's probably the, the best use there for Tavern Keeper. It's a good one. Uh tr yeah, Trapper is summon, and yeah, honestly, I would probably rather be having the Trappers. Trapper is just amazing, and then, you know, you get the one-mana 5-5s five fives that are just really good in the mid-game that help you play a one-mana 5-5. Five five. Where's that? Um, you know, one-mana 5-5 five five with other stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I honestly, Trapper is just, a, a, just an amazing card, and we see it with the, the, the Sejuani Ash deck that's how good Avaros and Trapper is getting you those one mana five fives. So yeah, it's a summon trigger. Um, you know, you you play, you know, you get it from War Mother's Call, then you put your Enraged Yeti on top, and then you're probably getting the Enraged Yeti the next turn with the War Mother's Call. But that's still probably just fine. Um, it's possible. So Avaros and Trapper was a card that got buffed. It used to be a two three. I'm pretty sure. It was either a 3-2 or a 2-3. It was one of those two. Um, I don't remember which which one, either the power or the health. It used to be two. And it really didn't see that much play as, as either a 3-2 or a 2-3. Um, but, uh, yeah, now it now it is. They're, they're, I, I don't think they're... They're not nerfing Enraged Yeti. It could be, like, they could go to top five. They could just go back to making this, like, a 2-3 or a 3-2. Um, oh, people are saying, oh, it was a 2-2 two -two before? Oh, it was a 2-2. Two -two. And then they bumped it up to a 3-3. Three -three. So, okay, yeah, it was a 2-2. Two -two. I could see them going back and doing that and rechanging this back to being a 2-2. Two -two. Um, it is. At a 3-3, three -three, it trades great. Like, that's that's a great body for a 3-drop. And then you just also have this huge bonus. So I could definitely see something happening with the power and health of Avaros and Trapper of changing that or... Or even changing it to four mana. I could see this being a four mana three three that gets you the one mana five five. I don't know. That could I wouldn't be surprised if that card changes. Would not be surprised. But as far as this deck, I could I could absolutely see putting in trappers instead of tavern keepers. For sure. All right, but there we go. That's War Mother's Lux. Those of y'all watched on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.